Identifying and reporting invasive species. Welcome back to Terminology Tuesday. One of the most important things that you can do to help prevent the spread of invasive species is learning to identify and report the common invasive species in your region. This is invasive coral ardesia, Ardesia crenata, which is easily identifiable at this time of year by its red berries. But when it's not in fruit, you can identify the glossy green leaves by these wavy leaf margins with scalloped edges that are pretty noticeable and unique. There are all kinds of invasive species and they vary region by region. So what's invasive up here in the panhandle might not be down in South Florida and South Florida has a lot of invasives that we don't have up here. So you have to learn what invasives are common to your region. And I'll include some resources in the caption. Learning to use apps like iNaturalist or Seek can be really useful in identifying invasive plants. Often because they're so common, they're often uh, uploaded to those apps. And so the algorithm is familiar with them. But if you're going to be actually removing or treating an invasive species, I would definitely recommend double checking that identification through the websites I provide in the caption. It's also important to get to know what invasive plants look like in their seedling stage when they're young. They, these are the seedlings of the invasive coral ardesia and you can Google a plant, a plant name and seedling and find what those seedlings look like for each species. Here's another invasive I just pulled. It's Ligustrum japonicum, Japanese privet. This is uh, more, not for beginners, because this plant could easily be confused with a lot of different species because it's pretty nondescript. So if you're just beginning, stick with plants that are easily identifiable, and there are plenty of invasives that are easily identifiable. Once you learn to identify invasive species, you're going to begin to see them everywhere, and that can be pretty depressing. My approach is to just do what I can, where I can, when I can. So I like to keep plastic bags in my backpack and when I'm walking in a public park or in my neighborhood, I just try to pull what I can and try not to overburden myself with attempting to control the entire population. There's only so much you can do at a time. That's why reporting invasive plant populations is so important. One person can only do so much and it's early detection of an invasive plant population is really important for land managers to know about. That early detection is essential in getting a handle on the population before it rampantly runs out of control. Luckily in Florida, we have a very easy to use app to download for reporting invasive species. It's put out by FWC and it's called I've Got One and it has the invasive Python as its logo. So you just download the app you have to create an account. Um, I would click plants, but you can, you can report other invasives. And this, I thought it would be under herbs, or herbaceous plants, but it's actually, this species, or coral ardesia, is actually under shrub or subshrub. And so you just search in here. I would go to AR, I need the scientific name. There we are, coral ardesia. And so you report and you just take a photo, it's really easy. And then it will ask you about how much area it's covering, et cetera, et cetera. You save it and you upload it. It's really easy to use and that's really important, especially for invasive species as they're beginning to spread into new areas. So especially if you see an invasive you haven't seen before in your area, reporting it is really essential. Thanks for joining me again for another Terminology Tuesday to learn about reporting and identifying invasive plants. Feel free to ask any questions in the comments that you might have. This is a very expansive topic and it's hard for me to go over it in just a few minutes. But next week we will go over some treatment options, ways of managing invasive species in your yard.